morning. Good morning. Welcome, everyone, to Northwest Church, the Church on the Hill, on this All Saints Sunday, the day that we remember and celebrate those who have gone before. There are black pads at the ends of the pews. If you're in the building, if you would please uh, fill those out. Let us know that you're here worshiping with us this morning, and if you're uh, joining us online, you can go to nwumc.com slash connect and register your attendance that way. My name is Pastor Chris, along with Pastor Mevin, one of the pastors here, and it is our joy to welcome you to worship this morning. We are going to begin our worship with the role of Victoria. our tradition on All Saints Sunday to read the names of those who have joined the church triumphant in the last year. This list is not exhaustive and it doesn't name everybody who um, has moved into life eternal, but we invite you to think about others as well. These are from our faith community. Sonny Abbott. Ray Belfridge. Sam Bumgardner. Bobby Edgerton. George Eichenberger. Judy Ellis. Carol Allison. Howard Kimberly. Ron Kimberly. Clarence Maxwell. Don Neff. Ruth Farr, Helen Skinner, Jeannie Slack, Phyllis Slee, Karen Stevens. Karen Walzak, Daylene Wood, and we light this last candle for, for all others who weigh upon our hearts, those who have gone before us. In their honor and memory, let's sing together for all of the saints. The words will be on the screen, or it's in the hymnal, number 711.
your cell phones are silent. And <laughs> we invite you to note the announcements in your bulletin. Please note that the bulletin can also be found at nwmc.com slash c-o-n-n-e-c-t for those who are worshiping with us online. Here are some highlights. If you've been part of our church community very long, you may recall that our annual stewardship campaign takes place in November. We are distributing stewardship packets in the hall today. If you didn't pick up your packet last Sunday, please stop by and pick up uh, from a church staff or lead team member. This is also a good time to check your contact information and provide us with any updates. Another November tradition at Northwest is Harvest Home Sunday, which will be next Sunday, November 13th. Help us stock the shelves at St. Paul's and NEMAC. Pantries by bringing groceries or monetary gifts marked as Harvest Home. A printed list of suggested items can be found in your bulletin and on the welcome table in the hall. Speaking of NEMAP, the pantry item for November is toilet paper. Donations can be left in the grocery cart in the hall during the month of November. On Friday, November 18th, NEMAP will present its 11th annual Harmony for Hunger concert at the Trinity United Methodist Church in Marble Cliff, beginning at 7.30. This year's concert will feature local talents as well as the Ohio State University We Club and will include a silent auction. Admission is $25. Beth Basil will be selling tickets in the hall between uh, Sunday services now through November 13th. Our annual conference, church conference will take place tonight at 7 p.m. at Powell United Methodist Church. This is a time when we look back at the past year and set goals for our church for the coming year. All are welcome to attend this celebration of our ministry. Mark your calendars. Join us as we decorate the church for Advent and Christmas on Sunday November 20th from noon to 3 p.m. All are welcome. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Brian Luke. I'm the organist and choir director. The piece that we're going to sing this morning is called To Sing Once More, and it's Craig Courtney wrote the music and Jonathan Cook the lyrics. Craig Courtney, you may or may not know, is a local boy. He's Columbus. I've worked with him several times. Many of us have worked with him. He's a great guy. And he wrote this piece uh, just this year. And it doesn't actually say it on the octavo, but I'm convinced it's a post-pandemic piece. Um, it's just too fitting for that. And it's it would have been nice to sing this the first week that we came back after uh, the pandemic. However, we didn't even know if we could sing that week. <laughs> and Craig Courtney writes rather difficult music. We needed a little time to practice. Um, but it is fitting that it's landed on this day, All Saints Sunday, as we remember what we've lost this year, those who are not with us. We've lost four musicians this year. Bobby Edgerton, Judy Ellis, Karen Walzak, and Karen Stevens. Uh, it's been a rough year, and yet we continue to get up and sing and look for that hope and praise. Uh, we were talking uh, during choir this morning about that period, that pandemic period. Did you know that way back in March 2020, we had one week where we were meeting here in person and then the next week, everything was online, just like that. And when I look back at it, I'm actually kind of amazed and proud that we were able to pivot so quickly. But for at least a year, maybe longer, we did not meet in this space. Do you remember that? I remember it well, because we would meet with Eric and one or two others, and he would film us here every week. And there was nobody in the building. It was creepy and not all that fun. 
but it provided us some good memories. Like the Christmas Eve service we did out on the balcony with our fingers freezing to the keyboard. I still remember the first drive-in service we did and how happy I was to see people through their windshields. <laughs> and one of our choir members this morning was talking about the joy she felt when the choir started meeting again. And I remember that very, very well. And I remember not feeling so much joy because I was too worried. We were sitting, not even here, that's too close together. We were sitting out there with masks. <laughs> and I was afraid, is that far enough apart? Is the rehearsal short enough? Can we sing through masks? But I'll tell you when I did feel joy that I'll never forget. The first day we all were back in this room singing hymns. So somehow we're, we are able to, to come out of uh, difficult losses and sing and find joy and hope and praise.
choir. I can also share that that was a particularly good gift for me since my mother died just a few weeks ago. When we were growing up, my mother sang in the church choir along with my father and then later on with my older sister. And so as I watched you sing, I saw her in the alto section. <laughs> with the other saints, the choir continues to move. Thanks be to God. Let's start with a good news story. This is a heartwarming story of two seventh grade students, a pair of sneakers, and an act of kindness. When Romello, Mello, early, saw people picking on his classmate Melvin Anderson over his old worn out shoes, it really got to him. So Romello asked his mom if he could buy Melvin new shoes, and he gave them to him the next day at school. The dean of Buffalo Creek Academy shared the story of Mello's act of kindness on Facebook. My student Mello told me he was tired of other students picking on Melvin about his shoes. Mello used his own allowance and bought Melvin some shoes Bryant Brown Jr. wrote. I could tell it was upsetting him, Romello said. It just put a real bad ache in my stomach to see somebody have to go through that and to be picked on just based on appearance. I had saved up my allowance, and so I asked my mom to take me to the shoe store. And the next day, I gave them to him. We share these good news stories, particularly on days like today, to remember that not only have the saints gone before us, there are still saints among us. Amen? Amen. We continue to pray for peace over our world, prayers for peace and civility on Election Day as well. From our local congregation, please know that Mary Lou Lamb had shoulder surgery on Thursday. She was re-hospitalized Friday due to complications from the anesthesia, but is now recovering at home. Joe Howard is also home recovering after heart surgery. We want to pray for the family of Bobby Edgerton, who passed away on Monday, October 31st. Steve Rayner is recovering from a fall last week, and Deb Holder, who used to be one of the pastors here, is back in Ohio now, where she continues speech, occupational, and physical therapy. If you have a joy or a concern that you would like to share, there are those prayer cards in the pew racks in front of you, or you can go to nwumc.com slash connect and press that request prayer button. And if you fill out one of those prayer cards, um, please feel free to leave it in, the, in one of the boxes at the back of the sanctuary so that we can be in prayer with and for you. As a community, we are committed to praying for all of those people who grieve, those who live with food insecurity, those who are in the midst of diagnoses or medical treatments, as well as their caregivers and the medical teams who treat them. We pray for people all over the world who are bullied just because of their appearance or just because they are who they are. We pray for military and missionary personnel who are separated from their families and all of those who have to deal with chronic pain. I invite us all to take a deep breath, fill our lungs with the Holy Spirit, and pray together. So God, you are our source of meaning in life and our hope of victory in death. Your spirit binds us to those who have gone before us. Your love is not limited to time, space, or dimension. Your love breaks down the barriers between differences. It 
cuts through the veil of this life and the next. This All Saints Sunday, we thank you particularly for those departed friends and relatives, those we have already named as well as those whose names we haven't spoken out loud. Once again, we claim that they now rest from their labors, their suffering, their worry, their limitations, their pain, has it's all ended. They have been reunited with loved ones who had gone before us all. You are the rock of our salvation. And by faith we claim that even when our bodies fail for good, you will still be our God, calling us to our eternal home that has been prepared by Jesus our Christ who show us the way. We must confess, however, that death is really mysterious to us mortals. We still feel great loss and grief. So today we pray for all of those we know and all of those around the world who are grieving the loss of family members and friends or grieving a change in employment, perhaps. The loss of financial security. Health that had once been taken for granted. And peace in places that are still riddled with violence and war. We need you, God. The whole world needs you. As we look to a future surrounded by the saints, and still plagued sometimes with the worst part of the human condition. Which is why we pray specifically for the election process this year. We long for civility and the assurance that you are our sovereign God. Infuse us all with wisdom and courage. Remind us that you are the God of everyone. You are the God of voters, as well as those who will be elected. You are the God of the screamers, and those whose voices are rarely heard. We confess that none of us has all solutions, so we long for collaboration again, not civil war. Our nation will only progress if we find new ways to work together across hallways and schedules and borders and aisles and differences. All of us need to be open to new ways of relating to one another. So this morning, each of us prays, change my heart, O oh God, not just those I oppose. Thank you, God, for healings that have come, even when healing doesn't come easily or come as we intended. May we learn to put our trust in you, truly living one day at a time in gratitude for those who help us, for the resources we have and share, for the gift of this faith community and the beauty of this day. Most of all, we thank you for Jesus who gave his life, the good shepherd, so that even when we are in the midst of grief and death, we know that in due time, we will be led beside still waters where our souls will be restored. And we really have nothing so we join our voices on this holy day, praying the prayer that Jesus taught us and pledging to live the very words we say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as 
we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
the gospel of your salvation and had believed in him, who are marked with the seal of the promise, Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all saints and for this reason. I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you become known to him. So that, with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may persevere with what is hoped to be wish he hath called you. What are the riches of his glory inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for all us who believe, according to the working of his great power? God put the power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and domination and above every name that is named not only in the age, but also in the age to come. He has put all things under the feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills all in all. This is the word of God for the people of God. to address this earlier when I welcomed all of you, uh, so let me just clear the air. Yes, it is I. <laughs> <laughs> Trying something different. Um, but don't worry, it's growing back. Let us pray. Almighty God, maker of all that is and what and ever shall be. Comfort, O oh comfort, your people. Our hearts are heavy, O oh God, yet we look to you as our hope in Christ our salvation. We place our trust and our faith in you, O oh Lord, that you will call us forth from places of grief and sorrow into joy in the future, our inheritance. Now I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts would be truly pleasing and acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm tired. My heart is heavy. There are too many candles on this table. I think one of the hardest parts of this job, this calling, is the loss that is felt when the saints of the church pass from life to life everlasting. So I want you to know that my heart is with you this morning. I know I'm your pastor, but I also feel very much a part of this community, this church family. And it's been a tough year, fam. It has felt like blow after blow after blow. And I wanted to start this message by acknowledging that. Today we remember the saints among us who have joined the heavenly chorus this past year. Many of us have friends and loved ones who are not church members who have also made the transition from life to life eternal. And that loss is real, and it hurts, even as we affirm the hope to which we are called and the glorious riches they have inherited. That is why when he approached the tomb of his friend Lazarus, even knowing the resurrection that was soon to come, Jesus wept. Our God is not ignorant of our grief or our suffering. 
Jesus meets us there with an understanding nod and a sympathetic tear. But he does not leave us there, brothers and sisters. He calls us forth from the pits in which we find ourselves and shows us the new life that is possible. But I want you to know that we are not alone in our grief. Throughout history, people have continued to suffer the pain of death and loss in their communities, and the Ephesian Christians, the addressees in our scripture reading this morning, were no different. We know from Acts that they faced opposition, sometimes violent opposition from the local populace, and just like us, they continued to live and die from natural and unnatural causes as humans do. They discovered that their new faith in Christ did not protect them from physical death. And perhaps they were confused because they were under the impression that Christ was going to come back soon and they were all going to be caught up into eternal life in the kingdom of God together like Elijah rising to heaven on so many chariots of fire. But Christ hadn't come yet, and many of them had already died. So what gives? Into this confusion and fear and pain, Paul writes words of comfort and truth. In Christ, we have also <coughs> obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people the praise of his glory. In other words, we do have a hope. We have obtained an inheritance and we have been promised the fullness of the glory of God. A place where mourning, crying, pain, and all manner of suffering shall cease to exist. And it is the power of God that makes all this possible. The very same power that raised Christ from the dead. Now for those of us who have existed for so long in the knowledge of the resurrection, <laughs> perhaps it has lost much of its significance. That is, we take resurrection for granted. And I don't mean symbolic resurrection, as in we will find newness of life after we have experienced loss, although that too is important. And I don't mean knowledge that life continues beyond death in some heavenly realm. This is not some symbolic, vague hope. This is real flesh and blood resurrection. The dead raised back to life, knit back together, and just as we knew them before they died. Yesterday morning, as I was standing in the narthex, out there behind the sanctuary, waiting to process in for Bobby's funeral, I stared out the window and I watched as the cyanide flowed past and the wind whipped through the trees and dislodging what little leaves were left. And I suddenly had a, a simple yet profound realization that I can only describe as Holy Spirit inspired. Jesus came back. He came back. He was dead. He was gone. He was lost, like so many of my friends. Faces I know I'll never see again in the flesh. The finality of death pierces the soul and makes the heart ache for times past. To his followers, his friends, his family, Jesus was gone. They 
had rolled the stone in front of the tomb. They had closed the casket. They had lowered it into the earth and piled on dirt. And then suddenly, he was back. They got to see him again in the flesh. They got to eat with him. They got to laugh with him. They got to listen to him speak and teach, and they got to hug him again. And yes, they had to say goodbye again, but that goodbye was not final. That goodbye came with the assurance that they would meet again. And that is the hope that we have, friends. That is our faith, resurrection. Jesus came back, and if we believe in the power of God to bring Jesus back from the dead, then we believe in the power of God to likewise raise these 18 saints and all others who have gone before, and us too, when our time to knit us back together and bring us at last blameless and holy through the gates of the kingdom to once again share in the fellowship of all the saints, including those we have loved most dearly who are for now separated from us by death. Jesus is the first fruits of this resurrection. Do you know what that means? It means that he is the first to be resurrected by God, but not the last. We who follow him have received a promise that we, too, will experience bodily resurrection. We, too, will see each other again. I know that doesn't make it hurt any less. It does, however, mean that we have a future to look forward to. And that is what hope does. It calls us out of our present sorrow and points us toward our future joy, the joy of seeing each other again face to face. Can you imagine what that will be like? That means that even though we may walk in darkness, our faces are turned toward the light a light that illuminates the ground in front of us just enough to enable us to put one foot in front of the other. And after a while, things don't seem quite as dark anymore. That, too, is a kind of resurrection. It's a spiritual healing. Oh, the scars are still there. They never really go away. But they do fade. The important thing to realize is that once you have healed, you become a symbol of hope for someone else. Just like Jesus is the example for us of a resurrection, capital R, resurrection, the proof of our future glory and our inheritance, you become an example of resurrection, lowercase r. For others going through the exact same thing. Proof that it is survivable. And that there is a life available on the other side of the pan. That's the beauty of our shared life together, family. We don't have to go through it alone. God walks with us and we walk with each other. We, the church, are the hope of the world. We are the proof that death does not, in fact, have the final word. We are the witness to resurrection. And through us, God is calling to those who are lost in grief or despair, reminding them that though the darkness may last through the night, joy comes in the morning. It reminds me of a story I once heard about a pastor who was working late one Saturday night and decided to call his wife before he left for home. It was about 10 o'clock. 
in the evening, but his wife didn't answer the phone. It just rang and rang and rang. And after a while, the, the pastor thought it was odd that she didn't answer, but he decided to, to quit trying to wrap up a few things and try again in a few minutes. And when he did, she answered right away. He asked her why she hadn't answered before. She said it hadn't rung at their house. So they brushed it off as a fluke and went on their merry way. Well, the following Monday, the pastor received a call at the church office, which was the phone that he'd used that Saturday night. The man on the other end wanted to know why he'd called on Saturday night. He said, it rang and rang and rang, but it, I, I didn't answer. And the pastor remembered the apparently misdirected call and apologized for disturbing the gentleman, explaining he'd intended to call his wife. And the caller said, that's okay, it's just... You see, I was in a dark place on Saturday night, and before I did anything drastic, I prayed, God, if you're there and you don't want me to do this, just give me a sign. Immediately, my phone started to ring, and I looked at the caller ID, and it said, Almighty God. <laughs> and I was too terrified to answer. <laughs> that man is now meeting regularly for counseling with the pastor of Almighty God Tabernacle Church. Oh, that is fabulous. You have to laugh. I believe God created laughter to bring us healing from our stress, our grief, and our despair. To bring us joy. I have a cousin. You know, I believe we're uh, first cousins twice removed, if I read the chart right. Uh, and my cousin, Babs, joins us for our Tuesday night Bible study. She joins on Zoom. And occasionally she would send me emails throughout the years and she would often sign them, count it all joy, Babs. Last August, Babs' husband, Dick, sadly, passed away. And since then, I still get emails, even as recently as three days ago, signed, count it all. There is hope. It might not call you on the phone, but it is calling you. It is calling us out of the heaviness of death and into the promise of resurrection. Even as God mourns with us in our present sorrow, God points us and draws us to our future joy. We will continue to be the church. We will carry on the work of the saints. We will model hope and healing for all those around us. And when the day comes, we will meet again. body or in spirit. Oh. <laughs> this comes a time in our worship where we are prepared to offer ourselves in whatever ways God is calling us to offer ourselves over to God in thanksgiving for the blessings that we have received. And so I want you to take this time, uh, if you're in the building, a time of prayer and meditation to prepare your offering, whether that's an offering of financial resources or an offering of your time or your talents or your spirit to God as we hear the music play. And there are uh, QR codes in the pews in front of you. I'm giving you permission to pull out your phones. You can scan those and you can give online. Uh, or you can prepare your offering that you can give at the back of the church on your way out of worship this morning. And if you're joining us online, you can go to nwumc.com slash connect uh, and click the button under online giving to give that way. But let's just take a moment now to silently offer all that we have and all that we are
closing hymn is Rejoice in God's Saints, number 708 in the Red Hymnals. And the words will be on the screens, in body or in spirit. Would you please stand and let us sing together. <laughs> Sisters in Christ, it has been a joy to worship with you this All Saints Sunday morning. Don't forget, if you have a prayer, concern, or a joy to share with us or an offering, you can do that at the back on your way out, or again at nwumc.com slash connect if you're joining online. Now let us go with these words. And now, faith Hope and love abide, these three. Faith in a God that has the power to resurrect the dead. Hope in the glorious inheritance that we will one day all share. In a love that binds us one to another that shall never end. And the greatest of these is love. Go in peace. Amen. Have a good morning.